We've been um, talking about transferring information from the real number set to the exponents. What I want to really take care of, uh, which is a huge part of uh, just crunching number mathematics, is uh, basically the exponents where you have rational numbers in the exponents. Remember if we took the real number set, real number set is broken down into four subcategories in the rational numbers, right? You have the natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. And when you transfer that over to the exponents, you had the natural numbers, which were one, two, three, all the way up to infinity, which cloned themselves, basically. You multiply the clones together. Whole numbers introduce zero, and anything to the power of zero is one. Integers introduce negative numbers in the exponents, and any negative number in the exponent just flips um, flips your uh, numbers. Okay, if it's in the top, it goes in the bottom, bottom goes to the top. And the rational numbers, when you have a fraction in the exponent, it takes the denominator and it makes it a rational number, right? Where it takes the root of it. So what I want to do, what I've been trying to do is come up with a bunch of examples where you deal with the rational numbers, rational numbers in the exponent, basically um, um, radicals, basically dealing with radicals, crunching radicals. So I've been trying to come up with a whole bunch of different examples of dealing with radicals and crunching them. And they've been really disjointed. Uh, I've looked at the videos and stuff. So I figured the best way to take care of this is probably just do one gigantic problem. And when you do one large problem, it takes care of a whole bunch of little problems in the process. You know, it's just basically like real life. If you take one big, take care of one huge problem, you know, a lot of little things have, you know, get taken care of in that process. That's why a lot of teachers, um, well, some teachers anyway, uh, when you, you know, if you're taking a course, you'll find out that, um, well, the more courses you take, you find out some teachers give, you know, uh, their tests are totally geared, it's just totally different worlds when you take you know a course with this person a course with this person you know this person might give you 60 little questions and you know another teacher might give you 10 really large problems and hopefully those problems are not multiple choice because you know you get marks along the way even if you don't get the final answer correct right so what we're gonna do is create a really large problem and then crunch that large problem to an answer now I have to come up with that problem right so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the answer, a uh, fairly simple answer, and then we're going to expand it. So we're going to basically reverse engineer a large problem. Um, if you remember, if you're, if you're a kid, if you're doing mazes, whenever you're doing mazes, you know, you're sitting here, start here, end here, you know, you sit there, you go through your thing. Um, if you ever get stuck, if you don't know how to do a maze, I remember when I was a kid, it's a lot easier starting from the end and going to the front, right? So that's what we're going to end up doing now. So we're going to start off at the end where, you know, the solution is for a really large problem and then uh, reverse engineer it and create a really large problem. Now, what kind of problem? I just basically want our answer to be, you know, uh, two terms. So let's say our answer is going to be two square root of 5 minus 3 a squared cube root of a squared. Now I'm making that one a little bit harder because uh, you know, you're going to get hard problems. And that one's very, going to be fairly straightforward. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is this answer can appear in um, in a whole bunch of different ways, right? There's a, just like if you have a number four, for example, let's say, actually let's use three. If you have a number, let's a smaller chunk. So if you have a number four, is that coming out green? Green comes out. So if you have a number four, you can write the number four any which way you want. Four could be, you know, eight, eight divided by two, right? Four can also be five minus one, right? So all of these numbers up top, uh, the final answer can appear um, in a lot of different forms. So if, if, for example, if you're getting a multiple choice, if you go into an exam, write a multiple choice exam, you know, there'll be four or five answers, you know, A, B, C, or D. When you solve a problem, you're not necessarily going to get specifically exactly those, the way the, the solutions are laid out. Sometimes you have to crunch the numbers and realize that, you know, number four is also eight over two. Now, you never, you never write number four as eight over two because you always want to reduce to the lowest possible form. But when you're dealing with the radicals, um, 
I've said before, ex uh, radicals are really exponents, so your answers can um, can appear in as an exponent if you have a multiple choice exam. Uh, can appear as an exponent, or they can appear as radicals. For example, uh, two square root five. So if you have two square root five, they could write this answer. Remember, remember radicals. When, when you don't have a number up here, that basically means a square. Root. So it's 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 cloning. It's a single clone, right? So when you go this way, it basically means whatever number is up here, it clones itself once or twice, basically. You get two clones out of it. So when you go over here, this square root of square root of uh, two square root five can be when two goes in here, it goes two times two, which becomes four. Four times five is twenty. So you can have this has a square root of 20. Now the final answer, may, they might write it down as the square root of 20, but they might also write it down as 20 to the power of 1 over 2. Okay. So keep this in mind where this number here can appear in multiple forms. Uh, another way, for example, let's take, uh, let's take this one. This is a cube root. Right? So if you take these numbers inside the root symbol, it means everything that's going inside is going to clone itself three times and they're going to multiply each other, right? So when the three goes in, three times three times three is 27. When the a squared goes in, you got three a squares multiplying each other. And the rule for when you're multiplying, so right now, let's, let's take all this stuff in, right? You got the cube root. You got the cube root of three. So it's cloning itself three times. Three times three times three is twenty-seven. So you got the cube root of twenty-seven. Then you have a squared multiplying itself three times. So you're gonna have a squared times a squared times a squared. And you already have an a squared inside the radical. So you're gonna have an a squared up here, right? A squared times A squared times A squared times A squared. All you do with multiplication, when you got exponents, you just add the exponents, right? So you got 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So the final answer for this is, we'll go all the way through one. We'll one. The final version of this could be Q root of 27 A to the power of 8. Right? So for this side of it, this term, they could write it like that. And again, that's not reduced form, but they could also write it in, in an exponent form. So let's bring this guy down. Remember, the cube, uh, the cube root basically means one third of this whole thing in the exponent, right? So it could be, actually, let's do this now. Let's not draw a wall here so we're not getting confused with these guys. So this guy becomes 27 a to the power of 8 cubed. Uh, to the, sorry, not cubed, to the, to the power of 1 third. So your final answer might appear as 20 to the power of a half minus 27 a, a to the power of 8 all to the, uh, to the power of 1 third. And again, that could be reduced, written in a different way, right? So it really depends what they're testing you on, and it depends uh, how well you're uh, how good you are at crunching numbers. Uh, the other way, if you were to write this thing as an exponent, one other way you could write it as, uh, do you have any room up here? I don't know. Uh, we've got sort of semi room here. Uh, another way they could write this as would be two times, yeah, two times five to the power of a half minus three a squared a to the power of 2 over 3. So when you're, obviously this would be in one line, right? And this is multiplication here. So whenever you're crunching numbers, what you really want to do is reduce it, uh, take it to the lowest form possible. And hopefully, where, whatever exams you're writing, they're going to stick with uh, one, one convention, basically. If they're going to deal with radicals, they're going to keep the answer in the radicals. But if they want to throw, uh, throw little chicks here and there, what they might do is kick it into the exponents, okay? So for the radicals, what we're going to do is create a super problem. I guess we're going to create a big problem. 
And this is what we're going to look for for the answer. 2 square root of 5 minus 3 a squared cube root of a squared. Okay. Let's go find another wall and uh, see where we can take this and uh, how far we're going to break it down. Okay. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is every step could be its own little question they give you. And we'll take care of that. We'll, we'll reduce it down. Okay.